The power of knowledge developing skill in the mental environment is a great preoccupation amongst technically advanced nations, for it holds great promises of power and discernment and, in some cases, even the outside control of the experience of others. This power is something that humanity has only begun to discover and to develop. While influence is practiced in many ways in your world, certainly in every family and in every nation, it still represents a set of skills that humanity is only beginning to discover and to discern. It is a power. Because it is a power, it requires great responsibility and the guidance of knowledge to be used correctly and appropriately. Like any power, it can be used for good or ill. In the greater community, the power of the mental environment represents a real frontier beyond the limits of technology, for in regions where nations have much contact with each other, they have over time developed parity in terms of technology. It is rare that one will have a great technological advantage over another for very long. So the subtle skills employed to discern the intentions of others, to plant ideas in the minds of others and to utilize one's knowledge of another's nature, skills and predispositions become of great importance in seeking advantage and in avoiding disadvantage. These skills are being brought to bear upon humanity at this time by those commercial forces who are in the world today trying to pacify humanity, trying to win human allegiance, trying to convince people in positions of power of the superiority of the intervention's goals and the weakness of humanity's leadership and skills in dealing with the difficult times ahead. These forces who are in your world are not military forces. They are depending entirely upon human acquiescence and thus bring their skill in the mental environment, which is the only real power that they have, to achieve their goals, to diminish resistance to their presence and to increase people's desire for their claims of leadership and authorship here in this world. Here you can see clearly a manipulation of the mental environment. Yet you can see this in all of your commercial attempts at advertising and persuasion that are ever present around you, trying to convince you that you are inadequate, that you need this product or this service to look better, to feel better, to be better, to be happy, to be successful or to be spiritually fulfilled. All represent manipulation in the mental environment, tantalizing the mind to make you think you want something that you would not want ordinarily, to make you think you need something that you ordinarily would not need or a need that you would fulfill in other ways. The examples go on and on. They are endless in your experience. But in the greater community, the potency of this influence is greatly increased. Ideas are planted in your mind without the use of symbols. Others can manipulate your dream sequences. They can create reoccurring thoughts in your mind. If you do not know how to discern these from your own thoughts, then you will claim ownership for them and they will affect you. They will affect you, influence you and lead you to do things you would not do otherwise or to make decisions that were not in your best interests. The power of inspiration, on the other hand, comes from knowledge. It cannot be influenced. It is immune to this kind of persuasion. Even a greater community set of skills used against an individual strong with knowledge would not be effective in changing their perception, their understanding or their experience. The influence would be felt but it would be recognized as a perpetration from the outside. This ability to be objective with one's own mind, thoughts and experiences is a very important part of practicing the greater community way of knowledge. It requires great discernment. It requires that you stand back from your thoughts to observe them rather than simply being governed by them or overtaken by them or tormented by them. While humanity is now dazzled by its advances in technology, it is yet to learn the greater powers that exist in the mental environment, powers that will exceed your technological abilities. For in truth you do not want to become too technologically advanced, or you will lose your self-sufficiency. Whatever technology is adequate to provide for your peoples to provide stability, security and to maintain freedom in your world, would be adequate if you can create it and sustain it. But if you want things from beyond the world and can be convinced that you need them and that you must have them for your safety, for your security, for your advancement or for your enrichment, then you have stepped over a boundary, a boundary that knowledge would discourage you from passing over. You will feel the restraint of knowledge here if you are sensitive to its presence. You can become addicted to certain kinds of things, things you do not need, things that are unnatural for you, things that weaken you. These are substances, these are drugs, these are possessions, these are forms of technology, 
these are forms of stimulation, there are so many inducements in the greater community to entice beings who are far stronger than you mentally into wanting these things or to becoming dependent upon them. Even the illegal trade in your part of the universe caters to this to a very great degree. The hazards are greater here, you see, but it is still the power and presence of knowledge that protects you, that enables you to recognize a form of persuasion and not to give in to it. Knowledge is not giving into it, and if knowledge is your ground of being, then you will not give in to it. But if knowledge is a distant voice in your mind, then other forces are controlling you. Then you are vulnerable. The greater community is an immense environment of persuasion regarding interaction between races. Nations that have chosen to live without freedom and to control their people and to restrict their movements, their thinking and their awareness must exercise great degrees of control. They must prevent their citizens from gaining access to knowledge. For knowledge is the beginning of one's liberation. It does not pay homage to the powers of the state or to religious institutions or to the persuasions of commercial interests or to the threat of exclusion, even the threat of death. Knowledge is the most powerful force in the universe, and those who seek to avoid it must avoid it at all costs, particularly if they are the leaders of nations or have tremendous wealth or power and influence in the realms of trade and commerce. Knowledge is revolutionary because it is inherent within the individual. To prevent people from being aware of it, you must consume their attention with other things, with fear and with desire, with conformity, with work with overwhelming work. It is a great challenge, then, to keep knowledge alive within a nation, particularly a nation that is moving away from knowledge in its emphasis. It is the most precious thing to keep knowledge alive within your world as you prepare to face the great waves of change that are coming to your world and as you prepare, unknowingly for your future within a greater community. People think knowledge is weak. It is just a feeling. It is just a thought. But it represents the core of your strength, the power of your integrity and the source of your true discernment. Lose this and no matter how strong you think you are, no matter how controlling you try to be, you will be easily persuaded and have already been easily persuaded. This is why knowledge must be a great emphasis, and this is why it represents the core spirituality in the universe. Regarding the reality of contact with other nations, the power of knowledge is the power to see beyond deception, the power to block inquiry, the power to know things that others cannot see, the power to maintain your integrity, the power to discern danger and the power to recognize a true friend and ally. It is this greater discernment that must be brought to bear in the complexity of communications, negotiations and trade within the greater community, where knowledge is rare and unknown, but to a relatively small number of individuals. Because knowledge has been placed within each person, it represents a potential for freedom and strength. Knowledge also has power in the mental environment, the power to inspire others, the power of inspiration. It is amazingly effective if an individual even has a little opening in their mind. This is what moves you when you hear someone else's genuine experience. This is what moves you when others share an experience of being moved themselves. This is what gives you the power of empathy. This is what enables you to experience another's experience. This is what enables you to value others who seem to be different from you and to value things beyond the persuasions of wealth, power and attraction, things ineffable, but permanent and potent. In the mental environment, you have to learn how to shield your mind. Others who have skill here are able to do this, to block intrusions, to block potent forces, to block thought forms that are projected at one and to maintain one's awareness if one is being affected by technology, by forms of radiation, by scanning and things of this nature. In an environment of greater influence and greater deception, the need for knowledge is even greater and more significant. As it is today, an individual from a greater community could simply dominate your mind. You would think what they want you to think. They would put thoughts in your mind and you would say them. They would stimulate your feelings, your desires or your fears, not by providing images, but simply through power in the mental environment. If you were able to have an objective experience of your mind, to realize that who you are is not your mind and to objectify your experience within your mind, you can resist these temptations.